This is just a quick video on how to freeze dry eggs. For those of us without chickens, I just get my eggs at Walmart, but if you do have chickens and you're getting more eggs than you can eat, this is a great way to preserve them. I've tried freeze drying eggs a ton of different ways, and this is the best way that I've found to do it. You just start by cracking all the eggs and putting them into a blender. What you want is a completely homogenized mixture. If the mixture is not completely homogenized, when you go to rehydrate the eggs, you'll end up with just clumpy, kind of fatty sections in the egg. I've tried unscrambled whole eggs and they kind of just end up chewy after you rehydrate them, but if you have a good recipe, let me know in the comments. I've also tried scrambled eggs that are cooked and again, by far, this is the best method that I've found. My wife and I did a blind taste test of all the different kinds that we could come up with and by far, this is the one that we liked the most. These eggs should keep for 10 years or more on the shelf once they're freeze dried. Similar products you can buy from the store have a shelf life of 10 years, so that's where I get that number. Augustin Farms claims a 10 year shelf life on their egg products, but if you look at Mountain House Meals, they claim a 30 year shelf life, so it's probably somewhere in between. Either way, it's a great way of storing protein long term. These eggs are great for baking, and you can just turn them into scrambled eggs if you need to. In that blind taste test that my wife and I did on these eggs, we really couldn't even tell the difference between these and fresh scrambled eggs. If you're trying to make a ready to eat freeze dried meal, I would just scramble the eggs into really small pieces, just that way they rehydrate a little bit better. Once these eggs are freeze dried, if I want to rehydrate the egg powder, it's about one third of a cup for two eggs. I'm also going to add one third cup water and then mix it together. This should give you about the right mixture, but you may need to play with the recipe just a little bit in order to get the right mixture that you like. So if you're like me and you do a lot of baking, the numbers that you're going to want to remember for baking is just one third cup powder and one third cup water. When you're freeze drying eggs, one of the most important things to do is make sure that the eggs are actually frozen before the freeze drying process starts. If the eggs are not completely frozen, the unfrozen sections will start to foam up and they could make a big mess. You can pre-freeze eggs in plastic bags and then just before you freeze dry it, you strip the plastic bag away so that way you're left with a nice egg brick. This is a great way to pre-freeze a ton of eggs and it's a great way to reduce the mess of just pouring eggs straight into a pan. One thing I like to do is to just pre-cool my chamber, and this is just a food safety thing, just that way my food gets cold faster. I like to pre-cool the chamber for a half hour while I'm preparing the eggs, and all this does is just get the eggs cold about a half hour quicker. All you have to do to pre-cool the chamber is just turn on the cycle and let the freezer run. If I had pre-frozen my eggs and I wanted to skip the freeze cycle, this is actually a super important step because you never want to put cold food into a warm chamber. If you put cold food into a warm chamber or cold food onto warm trays, you get just a little bit of water that's generated inside the food. Then if you go to skip the freeze cycle, the water boils off and it causes what we call a virtual leak. Your machine will pick this up as a vacuum leak, but what's really happening is that the liquid water is boiling off so quickly that the machine can't keep up. So if you get a vacuum error after skipping the freeze cycle or after pausing the cycle in the middle, it may just be that there was a little bit of liquid water that formed and it's just boiling off. Right here, I'm just trying to get the eggs as full as I can into the trays. I like to start with the trays inside the chamber and level, just that way I don't have to transport them and spill them all over the place. You can fill the trays pretty much all the way to the top, but you want to keep in mind that the medium freeze dryer can do about a gallon of liquid and that the large freeze dryer can do about two gallons of liquid pretty comfortably. Eggs are a pretty hardy food to do, so I'm going to set my temperatures anywhere from 115 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Just prior to the recording of this video, we've been doing a lot of experiments with pressure, and here's what we found. If you go with a more aggressive pressure, so let's say 1200 to 1800 millitor, you'll end up with a faster cycle, but there is a trade-off. The faster the cycle, the more water gets sent to the pump, and the more often you'll need to change the oil. So if you go with a lower pressure, so let's say 600 to 900 millitor, your cycle will take a little bit longer, but you will end up sending less water to the pump and have to do less oil changes. Machines built before March of 2024 may not be able to go below 1200 millitor. So if you have an early machine and you'd like to change the oil just a little bit less, go ahead and just update your code. You can find the new software by going to the front page of the website and at the bottom, there's a downloads button. This page will have instructions on how to download the new software. Sometimes during the dry cycle, your trays will slide forward just like this top one, but don't worry, all it means is that your trays aren't quite level. Don't worry if it slides out during the dry cycle because there's still enough heat being transferred into the food that it's still going to get dry. I've had this happen quite a few times over the years and I've never had a batch fail because of it. Here I'm just checking to see how dry the eggs are and if there's any ice left over. One way that you can check to see if the food is done before opening up the chamber is actually just look at the pressure. If the pressure has been reading about 200 millitor for the last hour or two, then the food is likely done. As all the water gets sublimated out of the food, the pressure starts to drop and it'll start to drop below 200 millitor. The pressure sensor has a lower limit of 200 millitor, so again, if you've seen this number for an hour or two, the food is likely done. 
If you set the pressure at 900 millitor and you're still seeing 900 millitor on the screen, all it means is that there's still ice in the food that's being boiled off or sublimated off and it's still generating pressure inside the machine. So if you see the numbers still hovering around that pressure limit that you set it at, it just means that the food's not quite done yet. Here we're trying to get the eggs packaged into mylar just that way they'll keep long term. Hopefully you found this informative, but if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at blueoponfreezedryers.com. Thanks for watching.